Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have uh, taken this up before. The committee passed it unanimously. Uh, we've been working with Senator Lee for some concerns he has, and I want to just say to anybody and everybody listening, Senator Lee has been great to work with. <laughs> there has never been a doubt about his desire to protect uh, uh, young people from having uh, their images com continuously shown, the sexual abuse that happened to them that was recorded in different forms completely repeatedly shown on the internet for the, all of their lives, he, he's against that. So Section 230, as we all know, basically protects social media platforms, uh, gives them liability protection. They, they say they're billboards. Uh, we've heard, Mr. Chairman, from victims of child exploitation, people as children being sexually abused, has been recorded in photos and, uh, and videos that are played out on the internet millions of times. And it just follows them to their grave. And so what we're saying here is when it comes to Section 230, <clears throat> we're going to have an exemption regarding two federal statutes that make it a crime to knowingly pass on uh, sexually graphic material regarding children. So an internet social media company uh, would be put on notice that they need to regulate this, but in terms of prosecution, they would have to normally engage in allowing the behavior to continue on their platforms. Uh, I think 49 states have laws regarding this subject matter. Senator Lee, uh, we will continue to work with you to make sure that we don't do anything to put states in a, in a bad spot or, or to, to capture the innocent. But I think the committee has spoken with one voice. I want to thank Senator Blumenthal. Thank every member of this committee. Uh, it took a while to get over the hearing. Senator Feinstein and I talked about it. The examples of people having children, mothers, fathers of children that were sexually abused and the abuse was captured uh, in video and sometimes photos that continues forever. And our goal is to tell the social media companies, get involved and stop this crap. Yeah. And if you don't take responsibility for what's on your platform, then Section 230 will not be there for you. And it's never going to end until we change the game. And this bill changes the game. And uh, I hope we can be unanimous in supporting this legislation get it to the floor and make it law and do something about protecting these children other than talking about it. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Blumenthal first. Thanks so much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm going to be brief because uh, I'd like the full, my full statement be entered in the record. Without objection. Uh, I'd also ask that letters of support from a number of organizations among the 250 law enforcement groups, uh, child advocates, NICMIC, and others be also entered in the record without objection. Without objection. Um, let, let, me, let me just uh, thank, first of all, Senator Graham for his uh, patience and dedication to this cause, which is extraordinarily bipartisan. We have 22 co-sponsors to this measure in the Senate. And I know there is some controversy about it, but I just ask my colleague to imagine for the moment the most unspeakable, despicable violation of your physical being that you can imagine at a young age, as a child, repeated thousands of times on the internet for millions of strangers to see with sadistic pleasure following you through your whole life. And imagine that someone has the tools and power to stop it and basically blows you off, refuses to respond. We have heard numerous examples uh, two 13-year-old boys groomed and coerced into making sexually explicit videos that later were 
posted on Twitter. They weren't hidden. They were posted for the whole world to see with hundreds of thousands of views and retweets. And their mother contacted the authorities. And Twitter basically said they were going to leave them up until the Department of Homeland Security intervened. Another example, Jane Doe versus Reddit. The ex-boyfriend of a 16-year-old girl recorded sexually explicit videos without her knowledge or consent and then posted them. They were taken down. He reposted them. And she was forced, in effect, to watch for the reposting again and again and again. Reddit is a $10 billion company, and there are simple, accessible, sometimes free methods for these companies to aut use automation to detect, whether through software or the cloud, when these images appear. Now, there's no question, big tech, there are armies of lobbyists and their allies have sought to make this issue one of encryption. It's not about encryption. That is a gigantic red herring. This issue is not about free speech. Rape is not free speech. And there are companies that actually are consistent and vigorous partners in this effort because they know it is possible to stop it with little or no cost. Now, this bill is more than just about, six, about Section 230. The Unit Act will stop exploitation before it stop, starts by expanding mandatory reporting to include the enticement and trafficking of children. It will, second, assist prosecutors and law enforcement by doubling the time that tech companies are legally required to preserve evidence of exploitation. It helps law enforcement more quickly recover sexually exploited children and remove them from harm. It fosters the next generation of technologies to stop exploitation. And it does hold tech companies accountable when they fail survivors and they enable these predators to spread the kind of sexual child sexual abuse material that is so egregious. Uh, the, the tech companies say, well, the answer is more resources, more money, more investigators. Yes, there should be more money, more resources, more investigators. But law enforcement itself says they need this statute. There are 250 child advocacy organizations, law enforcement organizations, such as uh, the National Association of Police Organizations, major cities, Police Chiefs Association, uh, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children has helped lead this effort. In fact, reported that they received 29.3 million reports of child sexual abuse material. 29.3 million, 29.3 million faces, voices, individual children coerced into this kind of activity, their images forever on the internet. So I ask my colleagues to support this measure. It is a narrow carve out to section 230 that simply holds accountable big tech with a knowledge standard requiring that it know about it, that is responsible and carefully crafted. We've worked with colleagues like Senator Leahy in his very constructive objections. We continue to work with colleagues such as Senator Lee and Senator Ossoff. We're more than happy to continue this effort as we go to the floor. I ask my colleagues to support this measure. I have several members who have sought recognition, Senator Feinstein and Senator Coons. But before I recognize them, I'd like to ask either Senator Blumenthal or Graham for clarification. I'm a co-sponsor. I don't disagree with anything you've said. But as a result of this change in Section 230, would these 
uh, tech companies have a duty, a duty to reasonably inspect material that is being published on their websites to determine whether it is in violation of this legislation which we're considering. There's no express duty in the statute, but if they have knowledge of it, they can be held accountable. Mr. Chairman, you bring up a, should they have a duty? <laughs> That's a different discussion for a different day. But right now, all we're saying is there are laws on the books that make it a crime to knowingly pass along sexually explicit material regarding minors. It happens every day, millions of times each day, on social media platforms. When they're informed, we hope they will act responsibly. But maybe the committee will consider a separate course of action to say you have an affirmative duty. That's not in this bill, but it may be in my next bill. Thank you for bringing it up.